الحاجات دي My little wonder The world is a large place But when your interest has been piqued and your imagination unleashed I know it will become yours to explore Your father is so impressed with the way you think and make connections to the world Your ideas and reflections are kind and respectful That's really correct No you did a very good job I have seen the excitement in your eyes when you tell me that you get to set up your own experiments just like a real scientist. The stretch activities in math class challenges you to beat your own achievements, making you the best version of yourself. And two, very nice. I'm glad that your teachers nurture your skills and knowledge, encouraging you to learn at your own pace. and bringing out the best in you. Regular feedback from your teachers helps me understand your progress in class and how I can support your learning at home. Mama, can we come back again? Of course we can. We're coming next week, okay? Learning is a lifelong journey. I am happy that the Eaton Academy nurtures your curiosity every step of the way. My okay, good evening once again, parents. Thank you for being able to be with us here today. My colleague Jacqueline and I know that we will have a fruitful session with you, uh, together with you. We will be sharing our thoughts and insights about the primary three requirements about weighted assessment, skills which your child needs to be successful in each subject, and how we, the Eton Academy, can be a part of your child's educational growth and journey. I'm Elizabeth and I oversee the English program here at the Eton Academy. For the last 23, 23 years, I've actually been at a local MOE school and uh, my last portfolio was running an English department. So this evening, I'm privileged to share my thoughts with you about the requirements which most of your children will face in school and how my teachers and I can help walk the journey with you and your child. Because to be honest, education is so much more than just scoring well on the next assessment, weighted assessment. It is really about the kind of person your child grows up to be, attitudes, dispositions, which he or she picks up in this educational journey and how they would be resilient and build up competencies to face the many, many challenges that will come their way. Uh, not just at primary three, but for beyond their primary school years and beyond. Um, my, Jack, my colleague, Jacqueline, she's a lead specialist from mathematics, will be sharing on math and science later, and she will introduce herself later as well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, before we begin, if you have any burning questions or as we present, you'd like some clarifications, do feel free to type them into the Zoom chat. and we'll respond to them later on in the session. And do wait till the end of our presentations for promotions in trial classes, information on trial classes. So just a little bit about ourselves. The Eaton Academy is, uh, was started by Eaton House and is part of the Distinguished Eaton House International Education Group. We offer English, mathematics, and science enrichment to children from nursery to primary six. So in addition to inculcating required skills and knowledge for each subject, what is distinctive about our curriculum is that it also cultivates and nurtures an inquiring mind. Our lessons are carefully crafted and activities are curated to foster open-mindedness and build confidence in your child. So this sets them up really for success, not just in school, but really for life. So what are weighted assessments? I believe many of you would have attended um, parents' briefings in school, especially uh, at the start of the year. Uh, teachers would have shared with you the assessment um, schedule for the year. Um, this, what they have shared is actually not, not entirely new. From 2019, actually MOE, in a move to reduce the emphasis on academic results, have actually formulated this tagline, learn for life. And what the intent was is to not have um, such a big, um, 
have everyone caught up in exams and how they're faring. And really, while there are no semestral assessments for primary one and primary two, as your child would have experienced in the last two years, um, what, the, what happens at primary three is actually very, very different for your child. And what your child needs to accomplish to be really good at primary three also changes. So while primary three is a transition year where your child will be exposed to many new subjects like science, there's higher content rigor and expectations. Later on in this presentation, you will hear how some examples of these higher expectations come through our subjects, English, math, and science, and how actually there shouldn't be any slowing down of learning simply because there are no exams. And um, I think many of you also will wonder, um, what happens if there are no exams? There are all these small bite-sized assessments in term one, term two, and term three, and then the bulk of the assessment ends up in term four. And from there, the results will actually determine which class perhaps your child goes to in later years. So what I would like to share is what we do at the Eaton Academy actually complements your child's learning, where day to day they learn subject content, content matter in school. And what we do here is really be the check and balance to ensure that your child is on the right path and progressing well. And if we do this, pro this weekly progress checks for your child. So our curriculum is very closely aligned to the progress of the syllabus in school, and we ensure that your child is on track to perform well in each and every weighted assessment. So I'll share a little bit more what I mean later. So for English, there are various components. So some of you would have received memos from school, right? To tell you, okay, for English, these are the assessment, and this is how the weighting and the marks are going to be like. And um, while these can be considered milestone checkpoints for teachers to determine how the students are adjusting to the level of acquiring necessary skills, very often most schools will test softer assessment items like listening and oral in term one and term two. While the heavier items of composition and language use takes place, uh, assessment for it takes place in the second half of the year. While this is actually good in, in, in its intention, to allow your child time to pick up the skills needed to do well for those assessments, what I would like to ask you is this. With how much certainty can you say that your child is performing at their very best every week and on track to achieve really, really good grades in the latter part of the year? So take term one, for example. While the weighted asset assessment in this example is only listening comprehension, your child will still need to ensure that they are up to the mark for compo writing, grammar learning, vocabulary acquisition, oral, com 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 oral skills, oral communication. And the assessment varies from school to school. The feedback you receive from your teachers with, in these other areas, not listening completely, also might vary. And very often meet the parents takes place in term two, possibly. And by that time, half the year would have gone by. So, what we do here is it, we complement your child's learning journey in education. Every week, our teachers will ensure that your child is on track to learning all the knowledge that they need to excel. Um, to be really, really honest, uh, some of you might actually be thinking that uh, my child's only in primary three, give them time to adjust. You know, there's still time before primary six because that's the ultimate goal, right? But really, time passes very, very quickly. and um, I actually really beg to differ to allow children to slow down because before you know it, um, each term will pass. So just like one term has almost already passed and the March holidays are coming. And before you know it, it'll be the end of the year and then there'll be primary four and primary five. And so every exam, actually every performance of your child in the exam matters and there really isn't room to slow down. Okay, so I'll also provide a little bit more elaboration of what I mean later. Um, so for English, which is what I will, I'll be talking about, um, the focus that we have here, and you will see on our right-hand side are the cover pages of our journals, the worksheets, is we do ensure for the first few months of the year that your child focuses on mastering key skills and strategies and to ensure they are exam-ready. So we use the colloquial term exam-ready. And so when the critical milestone rolls around, you would know for certain that your child is prepared. Um, for primary three, actually, we don't just have term four as a milestone. We actually also have the GP screening in August. 
the first round of GP screening, screening and the second round in October. And I'm sure most parents in Singapore, we always want the children to, to have the best possible learning experience and best possible opportunity to do well. So when your child is going to, be, uh, when you uh, sign up your child to be screened for the GP program, I'm sure you want your child to do well too. And actually some parts of um, what we do at the Eton Academy does prepare your child for that. Okay. I'll, um, we also strengthen content mastery. So besides teaching skills, we actually ensure that there's sufficient content um, for all our subjects. So in my case, English, we review concepts and we personalize feedback every week. You will get to speak to your uh, students, uh, your child's teacher, and the child, uh, your um, the teacher will actually provide feedback on the areas that they've learned, areas for growth, and how to work with your child in partnership to ensure that they are always performing up to you. So as shared earlier, when you begin early and keep pace with the learning, your child will be ahead of the class, exceed their potential, and of course grow in confidence, which is actually what we all want. So what I'm going to show you next is an example of how the demands of primary two and primary three changes and what a big jump it is. Okay. So for example, this is a reading requirement at primary two. It's a comprehension passage from one of the stellar worksheets. Uh, one of my colleagues shared with me her uh, child's materials. You will look at the passage. You will see that it's an easily accessible passage. And one way to determine the level of difficulty of the passage is to use Flash can cake grade level score. So you will see the score there. This passage is rated 2.6. It corresponds with the grade level that the child needs to be in to process and comprehend this passage. Um, 2.6 will be suitable for a primary two child. You see the age range over there. Now, this is a passage in a primary three stellar worksheet. If you take a look at it, you will notice that the jump in reading level is great. The grade level score has gone up to 4.81. The length of the passage has more than doubled, and the reading difficulty is for 10 to 11 year old child. So the mental capacity that your child needs in order to understand and decipher meaning at primary three is greater. A common observation that I've seen from the classes I've taught before is that the child simply gives up because it suddenly becomes too much words and it's too long, it's too much to process. And the cognitive demands placed on the child at primary three as compared to primary two is very high. Hence, I always say it's necessary to make sure that your child is ready. Let's look at the types of English questions posed during comprehension. You will see that at primary two, questions tend to be recall and explain. Um, on the Bloom's taxonomy of skills, these are actually the two base skill, skills required. Now, let's look at primary three. You will suddenly, if you read the past, you read the questions, you will notice that they require additional text uh, steps in processing, application, analysis, and evaluation. So not only will your child have to process the comprehension of the text, but also digest it, and then decipher which part of information will I need in order to answer the question. So you will see there's a huge jump in the skills tested. The mental discipline and connective connect connections that your child needs to make is very great. So they need, and in addition, your child no longer answers like multiple choice with a tick across the circle. They need to put down their thoughts in sentences. So what we do here for English lessons, um, for where we have we focus on the skills like comp comprehension connection and close connection is to teach children strategies. And these strategies will enable your child to excel when faced with various English question types and various passages. So take this passage, for example. Uh, the students read an excerpt from a mentor text, The Iron Man. They use the noticing, noticing strategy to list observations of short sentences. Okay, learners will consider how does dialogue convey a character's intention and feeling, how to interpret it. So this is actually very different from just a narrative story that they have always read in primary two. We also use visible learning strategy of See, Think, Wonder, where students can complete a graphic organizer. So the children in our lessons are taught how to put down their thoughts in sentences. You will see that this is actually quite similar to the requirements in school. There's a great focus on techniques because 
you can lead a horse to water, right? But the horse must know or want to do something. So we teach children techniques to enable them to be able to carry out independent response. And your child will actually remember very quickly how to respond to a variety of question types because whenever they come for lessons, our teachers reinforce this. And the curriculum is curated in such a way that our children build on knowledge. Um, and they reinforce this knowledge by revisiting things that they have learned before. Okay, so moving on from comprehension, let's take a look at composition writing. This is possibly how a task could be presented in primary two. Some of you may actually also recall it was actually in the stellar worksheets, right? Rubrics tend to be very task specific. Pictures are individual and the children may be required to write sentences about a picture. Looking at what is required at primary three, you will notice that the rubrics are actually more demanding and there are more things required of your child, which have been highlighted in yellow. This is what a question would be like at primary three. It's called guided writing. The story has to be based on the pictures shown in a sequence. So one, two, three, four, the top two, and then the third left. And then they need to give the story their own ending. So here is where the imaginativeness and creativity of the child can shine through when they are taught how to write good stories using appropriate vocabulary. You will also notice that the word count has gone up from what is required before. And so your child will be assessed on the relevance of their ideas, development of ideas, and even linking ideas from picture to picture. In addition to the language aspects of language structure, vocabulary, and how they organize their thoughts, um, no longer is it possible for a child to just memorize a composition or a story and then just regurgitate it back in the exam. Okay, they do need to come up with something creative on their own. So what we do in our English lessons really is to develop writing skills. One of our key focus is allowing our children to have a voice and being able to tap on their natural, natural curiosity. So we have writer's workshop and grasping grammar. These two work hand in hand to allow your child to express their thoughts in words. So this lesson, for example, is a writing lesson where they don't memorize this phrases, but together with the story feature, in this case, the story is wave. Children are encouraged to use their own imagination to create their stories. So this actually sets them apart from the exam. Um, when I was teaching, something very common that we see in compositions are similar openings or similar closings. This is not, we know that the child did not creatively write it. They actually memorized it and they just put it back on the composition. This does not set them apart. So what we do here is we really want children to write beginnings and endings, and even the middle of the conflict in the story, something that is original and from their own voice. This allows them to actually score better in the exams. From writing, uh, in order to write well, children need to build vocabulary. So foundationally, we build the child up. At primary two, this is something that you would see. Students are guided with examples and non-examples of, I think it's similar words and they just need to identify the keywords. However, at primary three, you will notice that a more independent response is required. It's more open-handed. This is actually a vocabulary field guide where the children are learning synonyms, but they're also collecting information about other words. So what we do here is every week, every week, we have a vocabulary in context where a word is picked up from the story that is shared. We share stories every week. And then the child is taught how to understand these words, to decode the words. What type of word is it? Is Which part of speech is it? How is it used? How is it intended to be used? And then they will create their own word. In addition, um, from as early as primary three, children are taught to keep a vocabulary field guide. So it's not just having a word bank of many, many words, but really a field guide which will allow them to know the meaning of a word, how is it used, what are related words and um, how can it be used in a sentence? How can it not be, how should it not be used? So in this case, we're actually equipping children with skills that they need to understand English. And these skills don't end at primary three. When they acquire these skills, these skills travel or, or grow with them as they progress on in their education journey. Uh, moving on to the skill of speaking. So um, at primary two and primary one and primary two, normally children will be given either one page to talk about, 
the teacher may ask certain questions and your child will just respond, right? So for oral, while they care, uh, for oral at primary three, your child is expected to carry out stimulus-based conversation. They must be able to express their personal thoughts to questions which the teacher will pose. And uh, questions that the teachers will ask will be in red font. Okay, you can see on the slide. So while speaking comes very naturally to children, and I'm sure all your children are able to chatter and chatter and chatter. You know, when I was um, when I was growing up, my mother used to call me a technique radio holder. La. National art. Technique was the brand, and I was a radio. I just jabber, jabber, jabber on. So she would always tell me to switch off, turn off the volume and mute. So the thing with our children is we don't want it to come to that extreme to just chatter incessantly but really to talk and speak with confidence, but also respond in a relevant and related manner. So while speaking comes naturally, they must be taught how to respond purposefully and in an organized manner. So that's what the oral examiner would do during an oral exam. So what we, uh, so while many children are able to pick up skills of speaking on a day-to-day -day basis when they speak even with you, much of this language is informal. During an oral assessment, the children have to switch hats and be formal and respond appropriately. And they need constant reinforcement to speak in that way to the oral examiner. So what we do here is we teach them techniques to respond, to articulate words, to read with expression. And um, on the slide, you'll see the example of PEEL, P-E-E-L. Different schools use different um, methods because there are different acronyms that you can pick up. But here we use PEEL, where we teach your children a very structured way to organize the response of their brain. And then after that, they can speak to the adults around them. So within the within our classroom, because they are actually nice and cozy sizes, children speak to each other and they learn the skill of speaking and listening. And the teachers will also be able to respond to them on a very one-to-one -one basis. Um, this is actually part of one of our key key threats that we um, that we hope to achieve at the Eton Academy as well, which is developing your voice, developing your child's voice. So listening and viewing at primary two, this is listening comprehension, and listening comprehension is one where, um, as parents, perhaps you might think that there's nothing to prepare. All children can listen and then they just write down. But really, there is a structured approach to it as well because children can listen to everything but they must be able to be auditory, to hear, and then respond with what they read. Okay? So this is actually close under questions at primary two. At primary three, this is the kind of listening comprehension that they will be posed with, where after listening to a text, they need to write down in words. They either learn to note take, they learn to respond, they have to summarize. And these are all skills that, that your child needs to pick up along the way from primary three. So what we do here for listening and viewing is really provide children with the opportunity not just to speak, but also to listen, to listen carefully as well. So they may interact with each other, they may interact with the teachers, and uh, we also teach them the skill. So a uh, similar timeless method for listening comprehension is you will hear a passage twice. So we actually teach them the skill. The first time you hear the passage, what do you do? And then what do you do after that? Do you respond? And then when you hear the passage again, what do you need to make? So these are things that are reinforced during all these things. Um, in addition, each term, this is actually the one that most of our parents really, really like because while schools do not have continual assessments or semestral assessments in the form, uh, in its full form, we do have language reviews, which are very, very similar to the main component of language learning in school. And so once a term, we will actually carry out language review for, for the children in each class at each level. And we'll be able to give you very specific feedback that your child, um, uh, areas, for, uh, areas for improvement that your child needs to uh, work on. Okay? And so we have language reviews to complement and uh, complement the learning. Now, this does not replace the assessment in schools. Really, it augments the process in school because there's no continual assessment anymore. But it's other way to assessment. Okay, so just in summary, how do my colleagues and I ensure that there's consistency in nurturing the best skills and dispositions in your child? Um, I'd like to share this little story where I have, um, we take uh, learning English or learning any subject to be like a fitness training 
you know, for for all of us, um, if you do exercise, say some some people need to go for runs daily, they need to go to the gym, or they need to go for their dance or zumba classes, fitness classes, family classes. Um, you do so on a very regular basis because you want to become better at it and you want to build the stamina for it. So similarly for for skills acquisition in English, there is a need to constantly keep at doing something to build stamina. And at certain junctures, you need to have either a trainer or somebody that you work with to actually check that you are improving as you build the stamina. So learning is like that for your children. You need to keep up the rigor. You cannot relax. To keep fit in learning, your child needs to develop stamina to learn. That's why there are lessons at school. And lessons each week at the Eton Academy will help you keep track of their fitness levels, so to speak. So for English, in summary, we let your child's voice be heard as they are used of authentic meta text from school, from storybooks we share. Um, most of our storybooks, when we pitch it for your children, it's not just at their reading level because some of your children really read a lot, read voraciously. So what we do have, we pitch our books at about two grade levels above. So we expose them to a series of different genres, different words, because the more you expose the child, the more they will take it. They are still sponges and they are still learning. Okay, So these texts are a springboard for allowing your child to think critically about issues and acquiring good writing techniques and vocabulary words. We also tap on the natural curiosity of the child. And when the child is actually naturally curious and wants to learn, we always see them more motivated. So this allows them to be more creative, be more imaginative. It's really the why and how of language skills. Okay? And being more curious and prompted to think further, these things are what will carry on, which are things that your child will carry through life. And finally, for English, one of the key things is to become an effective communicator. That's why we learn language, right? So it's not a one-sided trait that the child must just be able to speak well and present well. But it's equally important to be able to listen and respond. And this boosts your child confidence because the ability to listen actively and articulate ideas and opinions is something that would set them apart from their friends. So these are the key components of English at the Eton Academy. For critical thinking, we have comprehension connection and close connection. Uh, we teach grammar. We also have oral communication to develop voice. We have curiosity in motion, which is one of our key focus for writing and also vocabulary acquisition. Finally, we, all, we will consistently provide reviews um, for the subject at the end of every term. So I've come to the end of the section for uh, my presentation for English. I will hand the time over now to my colleague, Jacqueline. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for sharing all that valuable insight into the English, uh, English curriculum. Good evening, parents. My name is Jacqueline, and I am the math subject lead here at the Eton Academy. It is a pleasure to have you all here this evening. So over my 15 years of teaching ex uh, experience, I've encountered many concerns that parents have as their children enter primary three and face exams for the first time. Today, I'm excited to share some tips that I hope will address these concerns and support your child's academic journey. Now, as parents, you may be wondering about the essential skills that your child needs to succeed in assessments and also the common challenges that they might encounter in primary three. So let's uh, unpack all these together. By this point, I'm sure your child's teacher has also shared with you how the weighted assessments are spread out in the academic year at your child's school. And most students would have set for their first weighted assessment as we are at the end of term one. While some schools might have two weighted assessments instead of three in the year, the first of which would um, might be in term two. So these weighted assessments would carry about 10 to 15% in weighting. And finally, they will sit for the end of your exams, which carry a larger weighting of 60 to 70% in term four. In terms of uh, format, they are mostly the same with a variation in topics that are covered in that particular term. There are usually three sections, the MCQ multiple choice questions, the short answer questions, and the long answer questions. The MCQ and short answer questions mainly test computational skills and are worth uh, two marks per question, 
Well, the long answer questions are the word problems that are worth uh, three to four marks each. The long answer questions uh, usually require an understanding of math language and the application of heuristics. So as the end of year exams carry a bigger weighting, the volume of questions uh, ex is expected to be larger as well. Now, in order to achieve academic success, there are several key skills that your child should master. Let's now unpack some of the skills that your child will need to develop to tackle any math problem. Firstly, your child will need to develop computational fluency. While speed is important, efficiency and accuracy in mathematical calculations also play a part in reducing computational errors that will lead to the loss of precious marks. Beyond computational fluency, it's also crucial for students to have a strong foundation in basic math operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. They should also be comfortable with applying these operations to solve problems and interpret word problems effectively. A deep understanding of how these operations work lays a strong foundation for advanced mathematical concepts. Math language serves as the bridge between mathematical concepts and their real-world applications. Students must be prof uh, proficient in deciphering mathematical language, whether it's in word problems, equations, or mathematical expressions. This proficiency enables them to accurately interpret and solve word problems. Next, with more emphasis on word problems this year, Heuristics or problem-solving strategies are essential tools in a student's mathematical toolkit. By applying heuristics, students can tackle complex problems systematically and efficiently. Encouraging the use of heuristics fosters critical thinking and creativity in problem-solving. A very important habit to cultivate is also the clear presentation of solutions, especially in word problems. Marks may be lost for incorrect answers, but marks are awarded for applying the correct method. So presenting solutions clearly will also help your child check for errors in their working. Finally, your child should be able to review their work, especially so when they have time after completing any written work. They should be able to spot errors in computation, or if they have transferred the wrong numbers from the question to the equation, or they should also be aware of any missing units in their answers. Mastering these essential skills can empower your child to tackle challenges with confidence and competence. Okay, let's now take uh, an overview of the Primary 3 MOE syllabus and what the key topics uh, that are relatively new in Primary 3 as compared to Primary 2. The three main strands in primary three are numbers and algebra, measurement and geometry, as well as statistics. So under numbers and algebra, a key substrand would be fractions. As your child will learn the complex skill of finding equivalent fractions and how to add and subtract unlike fractions. With measurements and geometry, they will delve into topics that tap into their visual spatial skills. These topics include area and perimeter, angles, and parallel and perpendicular lines. Finally, your child will learn about data interpretation in bar graphs. Now, in my years of teaching, I've also noticed that students encounter difficulties with certain concepts. So let me give you an insight into what primary three students usually, usually struggle with, and we will look into how the Eden Academy can help address these concepts later. I have highlighted here some areas in the three strands, but for today's sharing, I'd like to zoom in on numbers and algebra. Many students find the language of math challenging, whether it's deciphering word problems, understanding mathematical terms, or interpreting symbols and notations. Long division can also be a daunting task for many students. The multi-step process requires precision and attention to detail, making it a common, a common stumbling block. Fractions also often evoke anxiety in students, especially when it comes to operations like addition and subtraction, or even just comparing two fractions. To alleviate this fear, we must emphasize the conceptual understanding of fractions and provide hands-on experiences to reinforce learning. Another area of struggle is in word problems which requires students to apply problem-solving strategies to real-life scenarios. Many students struggle with identifying and interpreting relevant information, 
choosing appropriate strategies and translating words into mathematical expressions. So why is it that students struggle with these concepts? We'll, we'll next take a look at how the level of difficulty in primary three differs from primary two. And allow me to show you how our lessons at the Eton Academy are structured to help students grasp this, these concepts easily. Let's examine the key differences in fractions between primary two and primary three. In primary two, your child learned to compare and order like fractions, which are fractions that either have the same denominator or the same numerator. They also learn to add and subtract these like fractions. However, in primary three, the challenge is now to do all that with unlike fractions. Since unlike fractions have different denominators, your child must now grasp the concept of finding equivalent fractions. And this involves knowing multiplication and division, and also that fractions may look different, but can re represent the same quantity. Let me now walk you through how we can help your child attain mastery of this topic of fractions at primary three. At the Eden Academy, the concrete pictorial abstract approach is central to how concepts are brought across to students. In the concrete stage, manipulatives such as fraction bars and circles are used to bring fractions to life through hands-on experiences. Moving to the pictorial stage, visual aids such as this fraction diagram or illustrations are employed to help connect the concrete experiences to visual representations. Finally, Students progress to work with symbolic representations of fractions on paper in our journals. By this stage, students have a solid understanding that's gained through the concrete and the pictorial experiences. Frequent practice through our journals further enhances their fluency and confidence to work with fractions. A hallmark of our lessons is developing curiosity in our learners. Curiosity drives us to ask questions, to seek answers and to think critically about what we observe. In the same lesson on fractions, your child might be brought through thinking routines like the see, think, wonder. Here, we see three different number lines of varying intervals. Your child will be asked guiding questions such as, what do you see in the number lines? What do they make you think? What do they make you wonder? These are some examples of how an Eton Academy student might express their answers. Through such thinking routines, our aim is to stimulate critical thinking, encourage observation, and empower our students to be active participants in their own learning journey. Another component of our lessons is incorporating discussion questions that's relevant to the concept taught to develop your child's unique voice. Through verbal verbalizing their thoughts and understanding of what they have observed, it gives, it gives the teacher insight into their thought process and allows the teacher to address any misconceptions immediately. The discussion questions are carefully structured to encourage independent thought and analysis of problem statements. And when our students go through this process of thinking, it enables them to be more aware of their learning and improves their problem-solving skills. Let's take a look at another major area that students usually struggle with and that is understanding math language. At the primary two level, we saw a direct relationship with words and numbers. For example, finding the sum of 481 and 299 is very simply taking 481 plus 299. Now in the example on the right-hand side, at the primary three level, we see more layers in the math language. So for example, the same question would be, at the primary three level would be find the sum of the values of the digit five in these two numbers that requires the student to understand that five in 2,350 is 50 and five in 5,840 is 5,000. And then the student is required to add 50 and 5,000 together. So we see here that the language makes it tougher to understand what is required of them. Understanding math language is also crucial to solving word, uh, word problems. In this example, in, we see how a comparison type of word problem looked like in primary two. Sometimes a model is already drawn with the value stated in the model. 
The language used is also very straightforward. On the right, you see an example of what an extension of a comparison type of word problem would look like at the primary three level. So there is a lot more information to be unpacked. Three or more values are given, and it is understandable why any nine-year-old would be intimidated by such a word problem. But here at the Eton Academy, we can help your child be confident problem solvers. In our lessons, we scaffold these problems by zooming in on key statements. We use the concrete, pictorial, abstract approach to tackle these problems one key statement at a time. So students manipulate cuisinaire rods to first represent key statements. Then they move on to drawing models. Finally, they translate the information into number equations to solve the questions. The teachers help to facilitate discussion through asking guiding questions to allow our students to think critically and to formulate the answers on their own. Students will learn to verbalize their thoughts and develop problem-solving skills to tackle word problems heuristically. While exploring a new concept, we get our students to think critically and express their thoughts logically. We encourage the students to ask questions so that they extend on their knowledge and make links between new concepts to what they have learned before, or even situations that they may encounter in their everyday life. Our students develop their own unique voice through thinking about similarities and differences between similar looking concepts in word problems. This enhances their problem solving skills as they gain a deeper understanding of mathematical concepts. When students are confident in identifying the subtle differences between word problems, it eases their mental load and reduces anxiety when they have to deal with a variety of different word problem types in the exams. To consolidate learning, your child will get to apply the strategies learned in our topical practice journals, which contain exam-style questions that commonly appear in school papers. Clear learning outcomes that, outline, uh, that align with the MOE syllabus are clearly stated on each topical practice journal. And each week, your child will also be given home learning tasks to re reinforce what was learned. Beyond application, we ensure that your child is exam ready through the emphasis of exam skills like the clear presentation of their solutions. Your child will also learn exam techniques uh, such as checking for specific errors in their written work. So these are some typical mistakes that most primary three students make in their exams. For example, missing number statements. It is important to have number statements in sequential order because even if the final answer given is incorrect, method marks may still be given if the number statements show the correct method used. Many students also miss out on writing the units in their answers, and this will cause a deduction in marks. At the Eton Academy, we pre prepare our students from the beginning of the year. They have the opportunity to sit for a full paper that assesses what they have learned up to the point of assessment. These summative and formative assessments help our teachers to evaluate your child's learning progress so that we may address their learning gaps early before they sit for the final year exams. We adopt a spiral, uh, spiral curriculum so that key concepts that are, present, are presented repeatedly throughout the curriculum to ensure sufficient exposure and practice to key concepts taught. This reinforces learning and prepares students for the end of your exam. We would love to be a part of your child's learning journey. Together, we can work collaboratively to support and empower your child to achieve success in the following areas. Through various exercises and practice problems, we will focus on helping your child become more fluent in mathematical computations. So this is just mastering of the basic arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, as well as more complex calculation. Regular practice and reinforcement will be provided to strengthen these skills. Math is more than just memorizing formulas and algorithms. It's also about understanding concepts and problem solving. We will encourage your child to think critically about mathematical concepts, analyze problems from different angles, and develop creative strategies to solve them. This will foster a deeper understanding of mathematical principles and promote independent thinking. 
In addition to mastering mathematical concepts, it's important for students to know how to approach exams effectively. We will teach your child various strategies for tackling different types of math problems, managing time efficiently during exams, and minimizing errors. By practicing these strategies regularly, your child will feel more confident and prepared when facing assessments. So I have now come to the end of my sharing for math. Thank you for your time. Just a gentle reminder, if you do have any questions or concerns that I have not addressed, please feel free to type it in the chat box below. And at the end of today's session, Elizabeth and I will take some time to answer them. But now the webinar is not over yet. I will shift my focus now to a new subject that all primary three students will take, which is the exploration of science. For my sharing on science, I will walk us through the weighted assessment structure, followed by exam strategies to tackle uh, the MCQ and the open-ended questions, as well as what we here do here at the Eton Academy to guide your child in this subject. So let me now walk you through the assessment structure for primary three science as we prepare our students for their academic journey. So on this slide, you see the, uh, the breakdown of how weighted assessments might look throughout the year. Let's begin with term one. In term one, students might be assessed through a written assessment, which includes the MCQ and open-ended questions. This will carry a total of 20 marks, which will account for 10% of the overall grade. And moving on to term two, there might be a slight increase in the total marks to 30. This incremental approach is designed to gradually prepare students for more complex assessments as they progress through the term. And in term three, the assessment structure is consistent with the previous terms. Now let's look at term four, which is a significant term for our students. It includes the end of year examinations, which is a more comprehensive assessment. This exam is divided into two booklets, booklet A for MCQs and booklet B for open-ended questions. The total marks for term four is a big jump to 80 and carries a much higher weighting of the total grade weightage. The asterisk here indicates the importance and emphasis placed on this end of year assessment, signifying its role in evaluating the student's understanding of the entire year's curriculum. It is crucial to note that the assessments are designed to not only evaluate the student's knowledge, but also to build their confidence in exam taking skills over the course of the year. By term four, they would have been gradually prepared through consistent practice and familiarization with the question formats. Here we see uh, a comprehensive overview of all the topics that are covered in primary three and primary four uh, science syllabus with the recent curriculum updates uh, initiated in 2023 for primary three, followed by 2024 for primary four. A standardized sequence of topics has been established across all schools, and this marks a significant shift from the previous years where schools had the autonomy to determine the order in which the topics were taught. This standardization ensures a cohesive educational experience and guarantees that every student, regardless of their school, receives a uniform foundation in scientific education at each stage of their learning journey. So let me now dive right into some simple strategies that, you can, uh, that your child can use to tackle the MCQs. One crucial step is to read the entire question carefully, ensuring that no details are overlooked and highlighting any clues or keywords provided. Some students think that they know what a question is asking for before reading it and jumping straight to the most logical answer. But this is a big mistake and can cost them dearly on multiple choice questions, which is worth two marks per question. Some students may find long questions accompanied by diagrams, tables, or graphs daunting. However, there's no need to fear because some of these questions are actually not as difficult as it appears to be. Students just have to read the question carefully and analyze the data given. As students analyze the questions, they can also drop down important points along the way, right? and writing down key points will help students organize their thoughts and prevents them from overlooking important details or rushing through the question without com fully comprehending it. Another strategy st students should adopt is the elimination method. So uh, when students elim eliminate any option, they must be able to justify which scientific concepts, whether they are 
uh, whether they, they must be able to justify with the scientific concepts and sound reasoning on why they eliminate the option. And this is to ensure that they have chosen the right choice. It is also essential for students to select the best answer and not just an answer that seems correct as the answer option chosen might not be what the question is asking for. When approaching a multiple choice question, the elimination method is a strategic way to deduce the correct answer. So now I'm going to show you how we can apply this elimination technique. So we have a, an MCQ, MCQ question here in front of us. Firstly, we examine options one and two. Both statements suggest that living things require air, food, and water to survive. While this is a scientifically accurate concept, Matthew's experiment does not provide evidence for the need for food and water. Since the experiment's conditions did not vary these factors, we cannot confirm the necessity based on this data alone. Therefore, we can eliminate options 1 and 2 because they include variables that were not tested in the experiment. Now let's consider option 3. Living things need air to survive. This statement is supported by the experimental setup where air availability was the only variable opted. The caterpillar in container A withholds survive, implying it had access to air, while the caterpillar in container B without holes did not survive. Thus, the most direct and supported conclusion is that air is essential for survival. Now, this makes option 3 the most viable answer based on the given evidence. Lastly, option 4 states that living things need light to survive. However, since both containers receive the same amount of light, we cannot conclude if living things need light to survive based on the experiment. Through this process of elimination, we focus on the variable that was purposefully changed and assess its impact. Okay, so now I will highlight some of the common weaknesses in students' responses when answering open-ended science questions. Some students may identify the wrong topic and apply the wrong concept to answer the questions. Sometimes students fail to understand what the question is asking for, or students might also misinterpret data in tables and graphs or forget to use the data provided in the answers. Some students think that writing more is better and safer, so they tend to write lengthy answers and give too much unnecessary information with no clear key concepts mentioned. And if their answers contradict each other or reveal a wrong concept, their marks might be deducted. Students also tend to miss out on questions that require drawing or labeling on diagrams as they only look out for lines to answer questions. Some answers tend to be too general and students give incomplete answers with no elaboration, with no keywords used or sometimes inaccurate terms are used. When the question has two or more setups and students are required to compare the setups, it is important for students to use comparison words like more, less, lightest, or, or nearest. At the Eden Academy, we focus on answering techniques when answering open-ended questions. So let's take a minute to digest this question and I will proceed to show you the responses of four different students to this question. Then I'll show you how we can apply our four C's strategy to enhance the quality of your child's answer. So let's recall the question, which material EFG is the most suitable for making part X of the basketball hoop? Explain your answer. Let's begin with student one. This student's response is material F, it is the strongest. Now the response by this student lacks a direct reference to the specific details of the question. The student did not make use of the data provided in the question and the student also did not link back to the function of the object in this question. Moving on to student two, um, the answer is material F, it could hold the most number of loads without breaking and material F is the strongest and most suitable to make part X of the basketball hoop. Now, we observe an incomplete explanation. While there was an attempt to form a conclusion, uh, the conclusion, which is one of the critical four C's representing the function of the object was notably absent. As for student three, 
the response was a material F. It could hold the most number of loads without breaking. Hence, it is strong. Part X of the basketball hoop needs to be strong to withstand the impact of the hits by the basketball. Now, this response uh, required a more comparative analysis. As the question involved multiple materials, the term strong was used instead of strongest, which may seem like a minor discrepancy, but is in fact significant in the context of precision. Material F should have been identified not just as strong, but as the strongest among the given options. For student four, the answer is it is the strongest. Part, of, uh, part X of the basketball who needs to be strong to withstand the impact of the hits by the basketball. Now, this student also missed an opportunity to fully engage with the question, leaving out the clue, which is the data from the table, which is essential to support the reasoning process. So now, how will an Eton Academy student be taught to answer this question? The first C is choice, which is material F, as it exhibits the highest load-bearing cap capability before breaking, a crucial factor for our basketball hoops part X. The second C, clue, is the evidence that material F can withstand the most number of loads, indicating its superior strength. The third C, concept, students need to use comparative words to compare the strength of the chosen material. Part X of the Basketball hoop requires a material that is not, not just strong, but the strongest available. And finally, C, conclusion. Students need to link their answer to the function of the basketball hoop, which must be able to withstand the impact of the hits by the basketball. So in conclusion, a meticulous application of the four Cs, choice, clue, concept, and conclusion, guides us to a clear and well-supported answer. It is not just about choosing the right material, it's also about illustrating why it's the right choice with data and concepts that lead to an irrefutable conclusion. Let's now take a look at how the Eaton Academy's immersive science curriculum, where our primary three and students will embark on an interactive journey when learning the topic on magnets. So our curriculum begins with exploration. Students participate in hands-on and engaging exp experiments that spark their curiosity. Moving deeper, our experiments encourage students to become scientific thinkers, asking questions and seeking answers beyond the surface. These activities are complemented by educational videos, adding depth to their understanding. Application is also vital. Our young learners take their newly acquired concepts on magnets and creatively apply them constructing games and confronting real-world problems and solidifying their knowledge through practical application. This entire learning cycle is rounded off with our review process, including both formative and summative assessments, reinforcing a culture of continuous improvement and intellectual growth. So I've now come to the end of my sharing for science. I hope you found the strategies that I've tried helpful. Do remember to type in the chat box if you still have any questions and we'll try our best to answer them in a while. And now let me hand uh, the time back to Elizabeth who will share a bit about how we can collaborate with you on our child's, on your child learning, learning journey. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you for sharing a very comprehensive overview of math and science and how it is learned and taught here at the ETH. Um, so to, uh, to round up our sharing this evening, I'd like to share with you how we at the Eton Academy personalize communication with parents and students to ensure that there is constant monitoring of, process, of progress of your child every week. So you will receive weekly updates about the class performance from our teacher, you will also hear what your child has learned, areas that your child needs to work on. And this one-to-one -one interaction has actually been very beneficial because there's a close collaboration with our teachers, the child, and yourself. In addition, we prepare learning snapshots for your child to document their progress and how they are faring. It would encapsulate the areas of strength and areas for growth that your child has how they should improve, and how you as parents can also support the learning that your child 
has over their years, over the year. So this is actually uh, what a sample of our learning snapshot look like for English. And at the end of each term, so we will have this positions of a TA learner, which include developing your voice and curiosity in motion. We also focus on language skills, reading, writing, speaking, as I mentioned earlier. We will also provide an overview of everything that was learned in the term. So comprehension, what passages, what are the close passages that we have explored, what are the skills they've picked up, what writing pieces did we do, what was our writing focus. In addition, we will also talk about vocabulary and grammar, oral, and different themes. This is the learning snapshot for math. There would be one review paper per term. At TEA, we prepare students from the beginning of the year. They have the opportunity to sit for a full paper that assesses what they have learned up to the point of assessment. So these summative and formative assessments help our teachers evaluate your child's uh, progress. And it's actually from there that our teachers will be able to write up the learning snapshots for your child. And in greater detail, you will see what they have learned in terms of content mastery, addition, subtraction, money, the topics that they've uh, learned in the term. In addition, we will also share with you what's coming up in the next term so that your child will also, your child's natural curiosity will be piqued and they will continue learning as well. I want to continue learning. So at the Eaton Academy, as you, have, as you have heard, we teach and learn together. Our desire is not only to personalize learning for your child, but to also nurture curious minds beyond the classroom and develop your child's unique voice. Because these are your lifelong skills, right? Okay, so um, let's take some questions. Uh, if you have any questions from what we have shared, please do type it in the chat box and we'll give our, uh, give our participants some time to put in their questions. So having heard uh, Jacqueline and myself share about what we do at the Eaton Academy, uh, do scan the QR code for a complimentary trial class. If you're unsure of your child's comprehension level, there's also a short quiz to gauge the understanding and preparedness uh, of your child. And should you sign up for your complimentary trial, trial class after this webinar, do quote the promo code P3 webinar so that your, your child will receive an exclusive um, Eaton Academy jacket on successful registration. Um, are there any questions? See the chance. Um, yes, so um I think Kenneth, your question was does the trial class extend to each subject? Uh yes, there's a trial class for each subject. So you can attend an English trial class. Uh, math trial class. Uh, and a science trial class. One, how is weekly parent communication conducted? Um, so what happened is uh, my, uh, my teachers will always welcome your child at the start of the lesson and then subsequently at the end of the lesson, uh, my teachers will, uh, the teachers will actually go out and if you're here to pick up your child, they will talk to you one-to-one. -one. Uh, other platforms of communication also include Class Dojo, which captures what takes place during the lesson and you can send direct messages to your teachers there as well. Are there any other questions? Okay, uh, I think another question that came in was uh, the jacket is only for successful termly registration. That means if you register for an entire term. What if the school topic differs from your syllabus? So I, um, Nisa, I'm guessing that you are asking regarding uh, science where the topics scheduled might actually be different. Um, I'm not too... Jacqueline, are you familiar with, for both science and math? Jacqueline, would you like to take the question that if the school is actually covering the topics at a different sequence from 
So what we the as, actually as much as we can, we are we are following the the school's curriculum. So the most I say we are maybe one or two topics ahead of your of what the child is learning in school. So for math, definitely we are following the school's textbook and the topics will be will be maybe one or two topics ahead of what your child is learning. It will not be different. The the topics will definitely be covered in your uh, in the child's school. It will be the same topics. It's just that we might we will be ahead of how of uh the when the school is teaching versus when we are teaching. I hope that answers the question. If not, uh let me know if if there are any more questions. Okay, so sorry, um, Mr. Lowe, I'd like to provide an additional clarification regarding the trial classes. So what we do is we offer one free trial per sub, uh, for a subject. So for example, if you would like your child to trial English, your child may attend one free trial for English. Upon successful registration for the subject, only then would... Uh, would a second free trial be available for a second subject? And then subsequently, if you register for the second subject, then your third free trial for science will kick in. So um, I believe that we also have uh, a discount offered for children who sign up for more than one subject. Our officers, our enrollment officers can contact you uh, to share with you a little bit more about the process of signing up for a trial and perhaps even scheduling a trial for you um, and provide you with more um, information regarding the promotions that we have if your child signs up for more than one subject. Okay. Okay, so um, I think there's another question. How will your teachers be able to help new students catch up to the level of your existing students? So what happened is, uh, I, I believe you're asking for English. Okay, so for English, um, we do take in students at any point of the school term. Uh, what we do is we really don't see it as a, a lack of, but really children would have learned certain topics, but we also practice the spiral, spiral development of skills, which means while they are learning something new, we will revisit the skills from earlier. So for example, if you're doing... Uh, clue sourcing and teaching children how to decipher clues in say a closed passage. Uh, when when the when a new uh, passage is introduced, my teachers will still go through the questions, uh, the skills again to reiterate and reinforce learning. Then subsequently continue teaching. So we actually level up students that way by revisiting the skills. Uh, how many full compos in a term? Uh, normally, I notice that we... Okay, so for different levels, we actually focus on developing certain aspects of compo writing. So the example you saw earlier was really about conflict and resolution. So we actually focus on that portion of writing for, for the children. So what my teachers... What, uh, what we do here really is um, we may provide the child with an opening and, and, and uh, development. And my teachers will zoom in on creating a specific writing task for segments of the compo. So if we talk about full writing compos, I believe children do write at least one full compo. But in the previous weeks leading up to that, there would be other smaller segments to fo which focuses on specific aspects of compo writing. Um, there's also one more question. Uh, I think Jacqueline, you'll, I'll need you to help me uh, respond to this. Uh, Ms. Nisa is also asking, how will you keep up with the lost topic? Sorry, what do you mean? Um, lost topic as in? Okay. Sorry, could, could, uh, could you clarify yeah. what uh, yeah. the lost topic 
do you mean if your child uh, registers later and not earlier? Like they missed out term one, so they, they lost the first term. Oh, as in the topic is already passed, which was taught. Is earlier. that what? I think that yes. what the parent means, right? Okay. Yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. So yes, we will, we because we, we adopt the spiral curriculum similar to English, we have regular reviews. Um, there will we will always revisit topics that were taught before, and then once per term we have um a, a full assessment. So, um, I won't say that the I mean they they won't lose not they won't lose that that topic, but they will definitely come we will definitely come back and revisit that topic throughout the academic year. You're welcome. Okay, uh, parents, do we have any further questions? Um, if if right now you do not have any for any other questions, um, you may also contact us at this email or dial this number for further for, for uh, should you wish to know more or learn more, or you have questions subsequently after this sharing. Um, yes, I believe that there is a discount if uh, more than one subject is taken. Um, maybe Ms. Nisa, I can get my enrollment officers to call, my enrollment uh, colleagues to call you to provide more information. Thank you. Okay, thank you parents for your time. Thank you for very, uh, thank you for spending this hour with us. We know your time is precious. We hope that we have shared with you uh, sufficiently what you need to make a good decision. And if you have further questions, you can actually contact us. Um, so thank you again from Jacqueline and myself and all my colleagues at the Eton Academy. We look forward to seeing you and having your child join us uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.